is my dream. Liberty sows its seed at Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. Guess what? It's been a year since I installed my solar setup. It took from April to July to get it up and running, and that was building the solar array and pricing and finding all the pieces that you see here, plus the big battery. And in that year, things have been pretty awesome. There's been some ups and downs. Obviously in the winter time, not as much power generated, but that was expected. The battery has been performing better than expected, so that's awesome because it wasn't cheap. And this equipment here, which I'm going to go through real briefly because I don't think I ever really showed how the setup is set up in my little doghouse that I built for this thing. Um, it works, but with one glaring problem. And I'm going to be doing three upgrades on this thing at the one year mark right now that are going to help fix all those problems. The system as it is right now, right here we have this. This is the MPPT controller, the solar charge controller. This has worked flawlessly. Uh, we're at nearly 400 kilowatt hours since the install and that's on and off sometimes. There was times in the winter when it was just too darn cold and I shut it down to protect the lithium ion battery. But this thing has performed without any issues, never needed to do any maintenance on it and I'm very happy. I paid less than $200 for that and I might do a separate video on that when it's set up but you can go back and see my other videos and see how, how it operates. This here, my master on off switch coming in from the solar and I've got this unplugged in here in the shop right now because like I said I'm going to be doing some upgrades. These two lines right here go to the solar array, and if I want to shut it off, because, I mean, there is a serious risk of electrical shock or death or burns, so anytime I'm messing with this stuff, I do shut things down. I've got this switch here, and that is either on for solar charging or off for maintenance, so I can do that. Uh, attached to this is this small cable right here, which is just a temperature sensor, and I have that taped directly to the battery. That helps protect the system if it gets down too cold, that it won't damage that lithium ion battery, which has been really nice. On a lead acid batteries, it would also keep it from overheating and damaging the batteries that way. You don't want those batteries boiling. Wiring goes over to here, comes into the system, it goes back out here, and then we're going to go off to these, these things here. These big fat cables here, well that goes to the lithium ion battery, the big battery that I bought, and that is what charges and holds that power. Any excess power during the daytime goes right to this inverter and that inverter does have this which is a 30 amp or 50 amp sorry fusible link so that's just if it pops if it gets more more draw or more energy coming in and I have had it trip about three times the way I usually find out that it tripped it, the battery goes dead because the way I have it set up this can trip and I'm no longer producing energy into the battery or into the system but the battery can still power the inverter so that's how that worked out I don't know if that's the ideal way of doing it, but it's been, it's been working fairly well for me. And so that's what's going on there. So it's worked, it's worked. It's powered about a third of my house. We did have a power outage that lasted two and a half days. And guess what? For two and a half days, we lived happily ever after off of this solar outfit. So at uh, you know 1.2 kilowatts per hour max output, plus the battery reserve, we were able to power everything that was necessary. We kept both the fridge and the freezer running nonstop. We were able to power up our well pump off of 240, and I'll explain that in another video, how we were able to do that on a very temporary measure, but we were able to get it running enough to pump water up to the house when we needed it, which wasn't often, thankfully, because we can just go down and get it out of the spring if we need it. But we are able to do all that stuff, and our stoves are gas, so we didn't need to have to worry about that. But we were able to run a fan because it was over the summer last summer, late last summer that this happened, and so it was nice. There are some shortcomings to this system and some issues, and the first issue I want to talk to you about is this right here. While this was a relatively no-name brand charger, you know, you can go with uh, some really high-end stuff. I think it's, I can't even remember the name of it, but there was other ones we looked at that were three times the cost of this, this being less than $200. This also was not an inexpensive purchase, but much less expensive than what you could pay for uh, an Ames power supply, something, uh, you know, more name brand. But this one here, that was the first big disappointment. So this is supposed to have had a year's warranty, which means it would just now be running out. And with that warranty, I figured, well, you know, if something goes wrong, it'll be covered. Well, at three months in, it started to not work properly. It worked fine in the morning. 
And then I noticed uh, a lot of humming coming through my radio equipment suddenly, and then by the afternoon it was out. And so I checked it out and uh, you know looked at the fuses, looked at everything else, dead short inside to miracle it didn't burn anything down. I contacted the company, and the company, which I don't think even sells any products on Amazon anymore, boy, they had every excuse in the book. It was uh, you know uh, lockdown related; they couldn't do it. They wanted me to pay shipping to have it shipped to a place in California. Then they refused to give me the address. I mean, it was a total nightmare. I am not a huge fan of Amazon, but I will say this. I contacted Amazon and complained about the situation, how they had a product on their site that was listed as having a warranty and they wouldn't honor it. And you know what? They sent me another one. They probably billed the company, which was the right thing to do, but at least they took care of it. This unit also lasted not as long as it should have. Obviously, the company refused to deal with me ever again, but not more than six months later, so two months ago, this thing died again, or started to act up. It didn't die. This one does still work, but a lot of line noise, a lot of noise in the radio equipment that I have here in the house. And you could just, you could just kind of see the lights flickering a little bit. And that's not acceptable. I have electronic equipment here that this, you know, needs to be kept at a regular voltage. So I stopped using that. I used a step down converter to 12 volts instead of 24. And I used some other inverters here for the last two months while I saved up. And I've saved up. And what we're going to be doing here, and I'm going to make another couple of videos on this here, is this. I've got some upgrades. Some of the stuff I should have installed the first time, and I didn't, and that is this piece right here. And that is a battery monitor, like a system monitor. So I, I should have put this in a long time ago, and I didn't, but I did order it. I have no way of knowing state of charge when I am using stuff. So when we lost power, I didn't know how much reserve capacity I had left. There is a LED on the battery itself that gives me voltage, but that's not exactly uh, directly lined up with how much power is left. So, I mean, you can use it, and that was our rough estimate. But this is going to allow me to know at any one given time how many watts are going out of that battery or out of the system, how many is coming in, and all the rest. So that is going to be something we install, and I'm going to be installing that directly on this board here. The other two pieces... This is something that we talked about um, that we're going to be messing around with here. And this is called a grid tie. So for a lot of the time, right, I'm, I'm wasting electricity, or I'm wasting energy, I should say. The system is producing between 6.5 and 8.5 and kilowatts a day. I'm only actually using about half that amount because I'm only powering a third of my house. This system right here, and again, a separate video on this, allows you to tie this thing and backfeed it into your house's grid. Now, it's not a grid tie where you're going to be backfeeding into the power company's power supply and it's going to you know, get you a credit every month. It's not that kind of setup. This is a smaller setup that measures uh, usage. So it's going to measure how much energy is being pulled out of the house and it will supplement up to that number, but it'll never push more. It'll never push into the system. It'll only push into the house if that makes any sense. So I'll make a video on that, but I'm going to be installing that here this week. And the big thing here, and this is not cheap, is an Ames power uh, inverter. This is a 24 volt, 2000 watt, might even be a 2500. Um, but this is going to be replacing this, this crummy Sudukio GAI or whatever it is brand thing. So overall, if I had to do it all over again, would I? You betcha, you betcha. I still plan on someday doubling the system. And then I, I plan maybe towards retirement on doubling the system one last time and being completely off grid. But for now, I have been more than impressed with what I'm getting out of the system for what it is. A couple of y'all out there um, commented, those of you who know solar, commented that my system was Mickey Mouse. I mean, it was a joke and it wasn't gonna do this or it wasn't gonna do that. You were wrong. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, but. If you, uh, if you eat on a budget, if you use your power on a budget, this system here actually could power the whole house indefinitely, I imagine, uh, with you know routine maintenance. Would I live like a normal person lives? Nope, not at all. All these beautiful lights that I have on here in the garage, I'd have to run half of that amount of lights. Uh, you know, So there's ways of cutting back on that. But for emergency situations, for when the power goes out, it completely kept us going silently and uh, completely replenishable you know I didn't have to burn fuel in my generator to keep that fridge and freezer running that's awesome so I guess that'll do it for today I'll make another video of changing this thing out we'll go review of this separately 
and I will show you how I went about hooking up the, uh, the uh, grid tie system as well. Because I'm going to have it set up, and it's going to be some wiring magic. But I'm going to have it set up so I can both feed the house off a battery when I want to, or flip a switch and use it as a grid tie system. And I think for the most part, from here on forward, once this is done, it'll be a grid tied system until a power outage, come out here, flip a switch, and I'll be off the battery system as well. So. That's it for today, my friends. I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms. Hope you enjoyed this video. Solar being a huge part of uh, what we're trying to do here on the mountain. And I hope you'll stick around because I do have some other videos that now that my back is feeling better, I've been meaning to make stuff about showing you the solar system I have here in the garage, which is a much smaller scale, something you can use to get interested in. And, and other dreams like that. <laughs> Take care, my friends.